Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Let's continue with our our lessons. Let's learn something today. Um, I, I don't want to, to fix anything. But uh, we just want to learn a few things. Because uh, it seems as if we... Uh, People, they think they know everything, but uh, there's something that you, you don't know. If you think you know everything about computers, probably you are wrong. You can't know everything. Even myself, I'm still learning. So, what do you have? I have these things. Yeah. I have these things. You can see. Some they call it memory, some they call RAM. I do have many RAMs here. 512 megabytes DDR2. These are some kind of old RAMs. Okay. We have two two gig RAM DDR3, one gig RAM DDR1. So, what do I have here? Here I do have some laptop and desktop RAMs. What is a RAM? Let's let's do this on the beginner side, you know. RAM is just an abbreviation, meaning to say random access memory. Meaning, it is a temporary storage for some programs and data, which can be used by the processor to quickly access some files. That's what the RAM is doing. So, I, I, I hear a lot of people, a lot of people, they come to me. My laptop is slow, can you, can you increase RAM, can you increase my RAM, my laptop is not, it's not doing fast, I need a bigger RAM. There are so many factors which might lead to your laptop to be slow. I always tell people that... Uh, RAM might not be useful sometimes. Maybe you have a, a corrupt Windows and it's dragging some files and programs when you try to open. If you, even if you put a 16 gig RAM, 32 gig RAM, a bigger RAM, that might not be helpful. So it's not always the case that when your computer or your laptop is slow, after you change the RAM, your laptop will be, will be okay or will be faster. So I explained the first thing that can be a corrupt Windows, can be a fault hard drive. A fault hard drive sometimes you can... Can, can make your computer slow. Even the processor itself can lead to 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 your computer responding slowly. So it's not a matter of RAM. So I just want to to do some little bit of theory. To see how, how the RAM power supply is working on, on laptop and desktop motherboards. Let's see how, how, how RAM is working on a, on, a, on, a, on a laptop. And some let's learn a few things. What a laptop, how a laptop will respond if we have a 40 RAM or a shorted RAM. 
because I found the shorted rim and uh, some laptops were coming on but no display not because of uh, graphics but because of a fault rim so let's go on the screen uh, let me see if I can draw something here let's focus on the screen and draw something if you can you uh, paint so i'll draw i'll i'll draw the rain power supply here laptop RAM power supply just to see how good so here from the I explained these things many times from the VCC which is uh, on the current set after two MOSFETs which is 19 volts our voltage is going everywhere it's going to 3.3 .3 volts which is meant to be on all the time going to 5 volts going to 1.2 for graphics one volts for the processor and everywhere so from this vcc point which is 19 we have um, or i can make this this paint smaller we have some capacitors here we have some capacitor which are connected in serial mode to the 19 volts power rail the one side of capacitors ground this one is plus these are called ceramic capacitors after the capacitor can be two can be three can be four that's uh, not important after that we have a MOSFETs let's call this uh, let's call this M to the power 1 that's our MOSFET here we have M2 that's our second MOSFET and uh, here yeah, four pins together okay let me draw it properly four pins together and uh, three pins together here on the other mosfet we have three pins together and four pins together going to ground four pins together they are going to the ground so what do we have here we have the gate which is going to the chip here that's the controller of the power supply power manager let's call this one mp and another gate from this mosfet is also going to the chip so like i said these two mosfets can be channel p can be channel n that's less important and you watch this this mosfet they are doing they are they are just switches 
they are just switches nothing special so switching up and up up and down up and down we create voltage here here we have a coil we create voltage here on the output so here we have coil and here this chip has to know what is going on the output in order for this chip to know what is going on the output mm, we have a, a low ohms resistor current sensor here which is giving feedback to the chip to the chip if you find any schematics of uh, any power random power supply of the laptop you will see this fb meaning to say this chip has to know what is happening on the output through this feedback and after that what do we have we have an electrolyte capacitor on the output one side is connected to ground and the other side that the plus after that we have 1.5 volts that's for the ram that's the ram voltage so our 19 volts which is coming from the main vcc which is the after two mosfets is coming through this direction and and here let me use another color red it's coming like this like this and this mosfet switching up and down up and down up and down will create voltage here on this coil and in that way we have a voltage on the output how many times does this happen this happen very quick i think above 40 000, 40,000 case 40,000 second 40,000 times per second something uh, around this value so these four pins which are together on the input of the first mosfet that's the the drain three pins source and here we have our gate which is coming to this so that's how a switching power supply is working especially on the ram and that's how a ram power supply is working so in most cases i found this mosfet shorted to ground if this mosfet is shorted to ground it means my 19 volts is coming from here and regulated and going straight to the ram power supply if any of this mosfet is shorted your 19 volts will go straight to the ram power supply if you check here you see 19 volts and uh, in that way obvious a ram which was meant to work with 1.5 volts if you see 19 volts going to supply ram obviously that ram won't work so in most cases you see your laptop is coming on no display and you think it's uh, some is a graphics or something check this power supply 
because if everything is working on the output we must have 1.5 1.3 1.8 Point eight, depending with the type of RAM. So, yeah, that that's the thing about uh, laptop RAM and uh, the RAM power supply. Actually, it's 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 there's nothing hard. You can see how 19 volts is converted to 1.5 volts because this when you see a power supply we have two MOSFETs the controller coil and output capacitor I think I have some boards maybe we can see something here one second i just want to see which one is the rim power supply just take a random board here zero zero so here is an s motherboard you can see we have this coil the output capacitor and the probably MOSFETs are on the other side you can see those are the ceramic capacitor you can see these two MOSFETs these two capacitors those are capacitors on the input they are connected to 19 volts the other side is 19 volts and the other one is ground you see and then here we have two MOSFETs one MOSFET is connected to ground and the other one to plus and the switching on off on off on off on off around the 40,000 times per second will create voltage on the output you can see here we have coil and the output capacitor which is going straight to the RAM which is working probably with one point with 1.5 volts and if I'm look here I can see the tracks they are going straight from this coil to this chip that's the driver for this power supply easy so I think I clear out everything about the rain power supply and um, yeah we we'll try to learn everything how the 5 volts and 3.3 volts power supply is working on laptop the 1 volt for the processor graphics 1.2 all various kind of uh, power supplies on laptop motherboards so let's meet on the next time bye